everyone and welcome back to our channel where we break down business fundamentals into easy to understand concepts. In our last video, we discussed two inventory control policies, continuous review policy and periodic review policy. We also saw how we could use these methods to reduce stockouts, manage orders effectively and boost customer satisfaction. But the video did not answer some questions like which product we should use a continuous inventory and for which product we should use a periodic inventory. And also, we did not say how we should choose the service level for each of these items. In this video, we will explain all these questions in four different parts. First, we will understand the different types of inventory classifications. The second part is a case study on how to implement ABC XYZ classification for PR store. And the third, we will understand how to set an optimized service level. And finally, we will create a tailored inventory policy for each of the category. Let's get started. Before explaining inventory classification, let us define what is an SKU. SKU, which expands to stock keeping unit, it is the smallest inventory unit that is tracked in a supply chain from production to retail. Let us understand this with an example. Consider detergent powder of XYZ brand, which is different from other brands. Does that make that an SKU? No, there are different package sizes like 1 kg, 500 g and 200 g, each having its own demand patterns, packaging sizes, production processes and transportation processes. So they will be considered as different SKUs. Similarly, for a business, one SKU can be different from the other in terms of its function, size, style, color and often location of either the production or the sales. Now that we have a pretty good understanding about SKU, let us look at some common classification methods. SKUs are classified based on revenue generated, criticality of the SKU, movement of the SKU and demand variability of the SKU. Classification based on revenue generated is ABC classification. Here, SKUs that contribute to 80% of the total revenue are classified as A items. Those contributing to 15% of the total revenue, they are classified as B items. And those contributing to the remaining 5%, they are classified as C items. Just keep in mind that the percentages mentioned here are just for guidelines and they can be altered. For inventory management, each classified group has a different approach. A items are very crucial to their revenue. So they are often monitored continuously even if that can increase cost. This is done so that stockouts can be avoided. B items can be reviewed periodically, balancing the oversight and the cost involved. For C items, due to their very low revenue impact, a very simpler approach like automated reorder policies are used that limit the management cost. The next classification is based on criticality. VED, which stands for vital, essential and desirable items. Here, vital items are necessary for the operations to run smoothly. Essential items don't stop the operations if they are not available, but they could increase the cost or lower the efficiency if they are not available. On the other hand, desirable items are non-critical and they can be stopped from anywhere in the nearby market. So companies don't usually keep the stock of these items. This classification is especially important for capital intensive businesses like production plants. The third classification is FSN classification, which classify goods based on their movement. They can be classified into fast moving, slow moving and non moving. Items with zero sales over a period of time are non moving goods. SKUs with sales within a range, say like 10 to 15 sales in a period are slow moving goods. Fast moving goods are those items which have sales above a threshold limit. This classification will help us to avoid over investing in the slow moving goods and non moving goods and manage the reorder intervals for the other items. Lastly, we have XYZ classification which sorts items based on the demand variability. A useful metric here will be the coefficient of variation which is the ratio of standard deviation and the average demand and expressed in percentage. Here, the X items 
have low demand variability with coefficient of variation less than 10 percentage and y atoms have coefficient of variation in the range 10 to 25 percentage and they have moderate demand variability whereas z items they have high demand variability and coefficient of variation is over 25 percentage again all these numbers used here are just as guidelines and they could be altered this classification help us to determine the safety stock levels needed for each of the items so these are the different inventory classifications that we use in the industry let us use this knowledge and do a case study on how to implement abc xyz classification for the inventory in priya store we will be working with the data set of 12 different skus each having the monthly sales from january to december the data also includes standard deviation coefficient of variation and the unit price of each sku now let us break down the calculation first we need to calculate the annual demand for this we just sum up the monthly demand of each sku next we calculate the mean monthly demand that is dividing the annual demand by 12 next we calculate the standard deviation which shows how much the sales fluctuate each month with respect to the mean monthly sales the next metric to be calculated is the coefficient of variation for this we divide the standard deviation by the mean monthly demand and multiply that by 100 to get a percentage now we calculate the annual sales and monetary value for this we multiply the annual demand to the unit price then we sort the entire table on the descending order of this annual sales the next step is to calculate the cumulative sales and cumulative sales percentage contribution of each sku once this calculation is done we can now classify this skus into a b and c the top 70 percentage of the cumulative sales is a the next 20 percentage is b and the last 10 percentage is c now let's classify the sku based on the coefficient of variation items with a coefficient of variation 5 percentage or lesser are in category x they indicate a low demand variability and skus with coefficient of variation between 5 to 10 percentage they fall into the category of y with medium variability and finally the skus with coefficient of variation above 10 percentage are category z showing high demand variability once we complete a tree here we can now combine the abc classification with the xyz categories we get a combined classification for each of the sku the result is that we get nine unique groups starting from ax which indicates high volume and low variability to cz which indicates low volume and high variability each of this group has unique characteristics which help us to set the tailored inventory policies accordingly. We have provided this Excel file in the description for your reference. After this, we are moving to the third part of our video on how to use the ABC XYZ classification to decide the optimum service level for each product category. For any SKU, the optimum service level would be when the expected profit is maximum. Imagine we plot a graph with the expected profit on Y axis and service level on the X axis. As we initially increase the service level, the profit initially rises because more demand is met. However, at a certain point, additional inventory cost arise, which can be either due to the expiry of the products or unnecessary storage. Hence, profit is dropped. This peak point is the optimum service level for that SKU. Similarly, we can map the optimum service level for various SKUs based on their annual sales, variability, and profit margin as shown in the figure. From this, we will draw some conclusions. The first one is high volume, low variability and high margin products like the AX items typically justify a higher service level because they drive steady profit with minimal fluctuations. And the second one is lower volume, high variability or low margin products like CZ items require a lower service level as the risk and cost of keeping them on hand will outweigh the profit. We have reached the last part of our video to set tailored inventory policies. AX category would require a service level of 99% and we can follow a continuous review approach for this category due to its high value. A similar approach can be used for AY and AZ items. For BX, BY and BZ items, service level would be lesser and we would follow a periodic review approach. 
However, as the variability increases, our review period would reduce. For CX categories, we can follow a long-term periodic review with a service level of 90%. However, for CY and CZ, we can go for bulk ordering as and when required. That's it. We have successfully applied a tailored inventory management for Priya store. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions on inventory management, let us know in the comments. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more tips on business fundamentals.